Uh, right, good evening members and good evening our uh, members of the public uh, this evening and also uh, good evening to uh, any uh, of our residents who are, who are watching this on the live stream and welcome to the meeting of uh, Ramsgate Town Council Full Council uh, this evening. Um, so, if I can, I will start on the um, membership of councillors. Have, uh, have we got any apologies, please? Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Young. She's unwell. Okay, thank you. Abington's just arrived. That's fine. Great. Good timing, Councillor okay. Abington. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Are there any declarations of okay. interest? Any declarations of interest this, on this evening's items? No, I'll take that as an... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I'm a director with AIR, so I will make myself... Thank you, Councillor Herrington. Thank you. Um, right, item three, public participation. Uh, we have one um, public request to speak, and that is by Mr Furness, who's sitting at the back there, and it's in relation um, to Ramsgate Fo Football Club, I, I believe. To furnish, you have three minutes. <laughs> no, although, if you do go over, I will allow you to go over a bit. As <laughs> soon as you're the only speaker in the evening, then, mate. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I hope everyone can hear me. Maybe you can come over here. Yeah, yeah, come up this end. Yeah. Chair, yeah, uh, I haven't read the point of order for ages. You haven't, you haven't. What's going on? Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> on a constitutional matter, um, I note that having come in this evening, we still don't have a picture of King George, King Charles III, uh, on the mantelpiece. It may be that there's been a palace protocol that until the official one has been done, we are to leave uh, the late Majesty up there. But it's not a, um, a palace a protocol. Is it possible we could at least have them both? Um, well, I, I would certainly ask the town clerk to look into that and uh, to see what protocol there is for it. And um, yeah, we'd be happy. I'm always happy to have. Uh, well, I always love the old queen anyway, but whether I love the king is another matter. But, <laughs> but, that, but, but happy to have our uh, monarch here. So I'll, I'll pass that over to the, to the town clerk if you look yep, at that. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Furnish, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I've got one question for everyone here. Who, for a reference to Ramsgate Football Ground, who actually owns the land? Not who's renting it, <coughs> who owns it. Now, the reason why I'm saying it, I'm getting, whether it's true, what I'm telling you here and now, whether it's true, or whether it's not true, whether it's smoke and mirrors, I don't know. This is why I've come to ask yourselves about it to find out officially in your capacity as Ramsgate Council. Now, I have been a neighbour of Ramsgate Council nearer 50 years than 40, so I've got history. And most of it is excellent, no problem whatsoever. They're good neighbours. Now, as I said, the only problem I've got is the ownership of the land. People tell me, old Ramsgatonians tell me, that the land was given to the people of Ramsgate to do only one thing, is for sports or outdoor activities in that area. Now, in uh, the 90s, I think it was, it was a second attempt since I've lived in my house to put houses on there. And I think it was about 69 dwellings they wanted to put on it. Then the district council agreed. The then uh, MP was all for it. Because I knew the man personally, that's how I know this, this is, that was a fact. 
and it was going through sweet as a nut until the ombudsman was involved. Now, who invited the ombudsman onto this, onto that subject? I don't know, and it was held up. The ombudsman found out that that land can only be used for sports activities. I say sport activities, football, whatever, right? Can only be done <coughs> that. So he, in his report, I was told that it stated. Now, what, where he got the information from, I don't know. What uh, it was the land. Uh, belonging to Thanet District Council and only had that uh, scenario put on it. But the land, I was told, was under the stewardship of Ramsgate District Council. So in other words, I could leave a chair to Ramsgate District Council for the, for the um, use of people from Ramsgate. That's but it was left in a will, apparently, so we've been told. Again, I'm saying what people are saying <coughs> on the streets. This is, I think, the only way your kindness of yourself probably would hear it, unless you go out and find out for yourself. This is it. I do not know. Now, they, the ombudsman stopped it because of that scenario it can only be used. Previous to that, the first time I was there, you know, when they started to try wanted to build on it, it was stopped again for some reason. The council withdrew it for some reason. Don't know. That's the first time. The second time, as I said before, uh, about the ombudsman was stepped in. Now, there is the uh, Ramsgate football ground. I put my. Uh, flagpole up, nailing the flag to the flagpole. What Ramsgate Football Club Committee is doing now is fantastic. <coughs> really is, for, in my opinion, first class. They're encouraging young people to come along. They've got, they've got funding for fantastic, faci good facilities, fantastic facilities. And they've got a good business plan. They've done me no harm at all. Now, they've improved a hell of a lot. I can understand why they want to buy the land to improve their facilities. But most of all, in my opinion, is it to borrow money so they can improve their facilities. Mr Furnish, you've now had five minutes. Can I ask you to wind up, please? Yes, certainly, sir. Thank certainly, you. sir. My wind up is there's a win win situation, and I'm quickly talking here. There is a win win situation where Thanet District Council has made a precedent with uh, 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 North Fallen Golf Club. North Fallen Golf Club was owned, the land was owned by Thanet District Council. I believe it was about 1999, 2000. They wanted to borrow money on it. But they couldn't because it's such a short lease. So Thanet District Council gave them a 125 year lease and they borrowed money and done a fantastic clubhouse. Now, I've got no objection to, in my opinion, to have someone organising a lease for 125 years for, the, uh, for if they wanted to borrow on that, they could improve the facilities. But the main thing is, that land will be honoured. It'll be Ramsgate, people of Ramsgate will own that. Okay, the one thing what frightens me the most is if that committee, and I'm, I'm sure it's never happened, God forbid, because it's happened to Derby. I do need you to wind up, please. It happened to Derby, and it happened even worse at uh, Burnley, uh, not Burnley, uh, but, uh, Anyway, another football club where it went broke and they had to set up all the land and everything. If it's freehold, they can do that and Ramsgate would lose the facilities of this land. I hope I've put my question up. Thank you very much for your patience, Thank you. sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. If you... <laughs> well, I can answer some of your... Um, some of your issues, um, but
But what I am going to do is ask the town clerk to look into the sale of, uh, Rams, uh, of that land for Ramsgate Football Club because the land has been sold by Thanet District Council to, Rams, uh, to Ramsgate Football Club. Yes. Now, my understanding is, as part of the sale, uh, the same as there was for Margate Football Club, uh, that there is uh, clauses, clauses within, within the contracts of sale that it must remain either as a football club or for, or for any other um, community use. Yes. Um, so what I will do, uh, I've already talked to the town clerk and she will look into it and she will get back to you within a week or so. And, and so we will ask Thanet District Council what is within the uh, con contracts of sale and, and must it remain as a, as a football club or whatever? Contracts of sale? Well, yeah, if you've got one. Right. Virginia. That's no problem at all. <clears throat> but if for any reason, I had a word with Councillor Green here, if for any reason that something turns up in the future, that it belongs to the people of Ramsgate, and I know Planning District Council is the, the mothership, if you know, <coughs> and it, is it a legal, was it legally done? Was there enough? Uh, if you bear, bear with me a second, Councillor Ramond, and he's, uh, yeah, uh, he's very the, historical. Uh, in the borough of uh, Ramsgate records <coughs> that are currently being digitalised by the Ramsgate Heritage uh, Regeneration Trust, in box 328, there are loads of records, old borough records on Ramsgate Football Club. I mean, if this uh, box can be uh, retrieved, then obviously you might find the information you're looking for. But I think what we need to, I need to uh, finish this up, Mr Furness, yes. and, and very grateful for your, your participation. Um, so we will get, the town clerk will get back to you uh, within a week or so, depending on depending on how quick Thanet District Council. Are. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we'll get back on it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Furnish. Very grateful for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you by all means, you may stay or you may go if you so wish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, item three point two. Reports from district councillors on matters directly related to Ramsgate. Is there Nothing to anybody who wants to know is the answer to that? Um, and also, um, yes, yes chair, please. the piper. Just mention, we did have uh, quite an interesting briefing from Councillor Pugh at the um, overview and scrutiny <laughs> meeting last night, bringing us up to speed with the uh, levelling up monies and so on and things, and some of those do clearly affect Ramsgate, not least off the top of my head, uh, the allocation of monies for the port uh, area. Uh, I did ask him at the meeting if he would provide uh, the slides that went along with that meeting so that people who were not there, uh, first of all, we, we can ha see the slides, but um, it might be uh, good if we had a set of them electronically sent to the town clerk so that anybody from this council um, who's not aware of the, what the presentation was can actually see what was happening. Thank you for that. Just just to say that I do have a levelling up meeting and represent your Ramsgate Town Council on that tomorrow afternoon right. and uh, and I will let you, as we haven't had one for two months, um, I will come back to you on exactly what that is, I will notify all councillors of, of what the result of that is. There are a number, number of issues um, that need discussion that Councillor Austin and I with the town promoter discussed the other day in relation to the town square, whatever you want to call it, the piazza, joining up with the road and down to the other, but that's linked with other funding, so that's a very difficult situation. Also, um, issues relating to Newington, uh, where they're asking for the money that they want because they can move forward with it. So I want to ask them to, to do that. Um, so I will let you know what the outcome of that is following that. Thank you, Councillor Piper. Thank you. Uh, Sorry. 
We're, Cash uh, green. We, this council, are in the same position as Newington regarding the possibility of TDC using Radford House. Yeah. Yeah, sure I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's part of it. David, I didn't go into everything, but Jeremy certainly. also asked about uh, business plans and business cases, which yeah. is why I asked about at every meeting in relation yeah. to this. And we were assured that these had now been developed and there was no reason why they should not be shared with councillors. And we pressed the point that we also need to be sharing a great deal more information with residents because if residents aren't seeing something physically happening, they at least need to know when it's going to happen. Agreed, so totally. I'm sure you'll be pushing those points as well. Councillor Wing. I also asked the question about scrutiny of money, and I've forgotten about 500k to Newington because I focused on the bandstand in, in Margate and the 4 million to uh, Dreamland. And it appears that the money is not given straight to them, they get it, they deliver a project and then they get the money back. So apparently they have have to use, but a, 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 a Chris Blundell assured us that this is all in the public domain, so I do think it's important for us to scrutinise what some of yeah, the yeah, money is right. spent on, because it's a significant amount of money, and at the minute, none of us really know what this money is being used But I will for. give you a point to pointing uh, once, once we've had the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, no county councillors are here, so we'll move on to uh, item four, which is minutes of council meeting. Um, I propose uh, that we approve the minutes of the meeting on the 28th of September. Uh, you weren't there, Chair. I weren't there, so I can't. Who was there? I was there. And a second, please. Right. All in favour, please show. Thank you. Uh, Chair, just a, a quick point on that. It's got no apologies received, Councillor Shetty. Councillor Roszewski was on holiday and he did mention it beforehand. Okay, but obviously it never got... We, we'll ch change that. Can, I, yeah, can we change you're that? approving the, the minutes with an amendment yeah. that I'll yeah. deal yeah. with for you. Yeah. I've given your apologies if you've been out of our way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, right, I, to me, I'll say... <laughs> item five, which is finance including grants. Uh, item 5.1. I'll pass you over to the Dep Deputy Town Clerk. Thank you, Chair. You've got two documents here. One is for payments under £1,000, which is the remit of the Town Clerk to approve. The total, uh, this is through from um, August, September and to last week. Uh, total approved was 5,338.32. Um, if you've got any queries, please ask me. Um, otherwise, this is to note. So I need a proposal, a seconder to note these, please. Members, any issues in relation to it? No. no. Propose we note them, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Seconder? Okay. All in favour of noting the report? Mm -hmm. Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. The Please. second document attached to this is uh, the back page. These are payments over £1,000 which are not within the remit of the town clerk to authorise and council needs to um, agree these. Total is £44,363.67. You will notice that there's a confidential section which is just over 13900 These are made up of wages, HMRC and KCC pension fund which are not, they're kept as confidential. Thank you. Councillor Green. Just curious, what's the libel and slander item? Oh, sure. Yes, I'm curious <laughs> now. Which one? Libel, libel and slander. As per part. Oh, we have never had the um, insurance cover broken down. It's always just been a lump that you see. But we asked them to break it down and that is what they um, gave us. So we are covered for libel. Libel and slander. Can we get what uh, Mr. McKinley said about the Ramsgate Town Council? Yeah. But our insurance doesn't cover yeah. the MP. Oh, it doesn't cover the MP. Okay, <laughs> just, a, just <laughs> uh, a thought. We a need joke. a proposal and seconder. Please. Okay, proposal and a seconder, please. Proposal. That's an XC and Councillor Hedmonton. All in favour of noting? Thank you very much. It's carried. Thank you, Chair. Right, uh, 5.2, to receive a written report from the Deputy Town Clerk, Finance Officer, in respect of the Ramsgate Fund and Events Fund, and make decisions in respect of the three grant applications contained therein. Thank you, Chair. 
The first two are for the Ramsgate Fund. The budget for Ramsgate Fund for this financial year is 35,000. The maximum amount which may be awarded is 10% of the fund or 3,500 pounds. Awards to date total 21,639 pounds 25 pence. Don't know where that pence comes from. Um, balance remaining is 13,360.75. Following the Ramsgate Fund application decisions, there is an application to the events fund which, which exceeds the balance remaining within that budget. You may wish to think about that when we get to it, whether we need to buy some yeah. money over. Yeah. So the first application is RF9 from Beyond the Page. The grant request is for £3,500 and the total projected expenditure is £13,520.50. This is um, apart from the sal salary of an ESOL facilitator and funding towards venue Excuse hire. Me. Can I, what is an ESOL facilitator? Oh, speakers of other languages. Yes. <laughs> English for speakers of other languages. Thank you very much. Um, the applicant states that the weekly sessions are held at the corner and there are currently 16 women attending of a variety of nationalities. The majority are mothers and thus play a key role in the successful integration and education of their children. The additional confidence gained in the acquisition of language often results in further vocational skills, training and or regular employment. Council to decide, please. Members, any comments at all? Councillor Austin. I strongly support this. Um, time was that government funding was available for people who wanted to improve their English, uh, integrate into society yeah. and whatever. Now that is specifically only for people who are job seekers and are benefit claimants. So if you're not, if you're an unwaged yeah. person out of the labour market or whatever, you, you, it's really difficult to access this kind of support. And it's very difficult to take a proper part in society without a basic level of English. So this, uh, projects like this are invaluable. Anybody else, any comment? Councillor Green. Um, until recently, we were adamant that we would support salaries for many um, I think that um, I think the criteria have now changed. Is that correct? Um, the criteria was changed, and um, an addition was put into the criteria, which said should normally be used for capital items, which gives council a bigger scope for spending this um, fund. On the other hand, this does sound like a very good scheme. It's run from a the corner, which is in a world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very disadvantaged for rarely grant funds too. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, in this one one occasion, I think I was. Thank you, Councillor Hedrington. Well, for the same reasons that David said, I mean, the corner seems to run very good programmes there, and this is if we're talking about these are mothers, then it's the whole family are impacted by this. Yeah. Children's um, language skills will improve too; it makes them more employable and able to, you know, at school. Absolutely yeah. agree, Councillor Nixie. Um, I propose we give them the fund that they're asking. If we're able. I've worked with um, ESOL in my teaching career, and and educating mothers and, and getting them. Uh, uh, able to talk just has so many knock on effects. I'm yeah. sure everyone else is going to explain that to you. Um, it's absolutely imperative that we help them out. So I'm opposed to them. Okay. And seconded. Okay. I, I think our experience from our Ukrainian friends uh, and the meeting today, there were very few Ukrainian people actually attended the meetings because they've benefited from some, first of all, some free basic English mm. lessons which we've been managed to. Not me deliver because I'm useless at this sort of thing, but somebody else, a volunteer in the community, has done, and then step up to. Uh, and, and I know there are a couple on this thing, and I think it's even more important that they're mothers because very often mothers are trapped at home with childcare. So I think it's really it's really important that, that, that mothers are able to take their children to this facility and access these lessons. Yeah. And our experience again with the Ukrainians is um, most of them have, because they've improved their English, are now employed. Good. Uh, and we have drastic shortages in a, lot of, in a lot of our areas locally. Thank you. We have a proposal and a seconder. Um, so I'm asking all in favour of it. Paid a full amount. Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? No, thank you. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the balance is 9,860 within the Ramsgate Fund. The second application is RF10 Royal Temple Yacht Club. 
they're um, requesting a thousand pound. Projected expenditure is one thousand four hundred. It's for uh, Christmas lighting arrays for boats, including the RNLI and Heritage Craft, and for local advertising. This is an annual event uh, in December through to January. Council to decide. Thank you. I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. 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 I think we're all. I think we'd all go with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. money into this yeah. town. That's, that's amazing. What we've paid them before for this. Um, don't know. Yeah, it, it, about the same every year. About the same every year. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. correct. Demand. I mean, I think given the increase, the increase in fuel, in electricity costs, we would just. I'd, I'd like to propose to give them the full amount. Yeah. That's already been. Yeah. Yeah. Seconded. Seconded. Yeah. yeah. Seconder. Lesson. All in. Sorry, Councillor Green. I think I've asked in previous years whether we could ask for a breakdown of what they actually spend it on. You can ask for that. Yeah, yeah. Not, a, not a problem. <laughs> no. All in favour? The show? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. The, ba the balance of the Ramsgate Fund is now 8,860. Thank you. Okay, your next application is from the Events Fund. The Events Fund budget um, was 60,000. There's no maximum amount that can be awarded. However, we only have £4,962.94 left in that budget. Council Heavington's leaving. Um, we have no listening through the key. <laughs> We have one application from Arts in Ramsgate. Uh, the, the grant requested is 10,960. The projected expenditure is 19,960. It's for funding towards the Ramsgate Winter Lantern Parade between 4 and 6 p.m. on Thursday, the 22nd of December. Um, I don't know whether you want to discuss this first or speak to the lady that is present. Is it your good self? Yeah. Um, if you could just give us uh, an idea of what's going to happen, that would be fantastic. I would like to. I'd like to explain that I'm a trade rescue of Great Bridge Carnival, which is a company. Do you want to go and stand there? Yes, yes. Can we can yeah. hear you. I'm here instead of Gemma from Arts and Landscape because we're developing the proposal in partnership and Gemma's <coughs> recuperating from illness still, so it's me. Um, but Really, the heart of this proposal is that we are providing workshops uh, two a week, um, sometimes more, running from the 9th of November through to the 22nd. And the first week of the holidays, all day workshops for those three days, right? And it's here that the arts work and the lantern work and the drumming workshop and will all take place. But when I wrote the, when Jim and I wrote, to be fair, what we saw is the um, benefits to the town. Uh, we didn't really mention like what a miserable Christmas people are facing, and that this is um, a warm space. You know, it's activity for whole families. Um, it's activities for the adults with special educational needs community that we've got good relationships with who are not well catered for. So. Of course we want to produce a really lovely, fabulous event for the town that's magical and is a lifetime memory and is free and you don't have to pay, like if you're going to Warmer Karma Castle or if you're going to do... You know, there's lots of families that won't be able to afford to take their kids anywhere. But it's also about having a weekly, twice weekly presence in the town where there's a space people can come that's well resourced, got good teachers, got good activity, Somewhere you're warm and welcome, and we'll be providing hot food and drinks. So I just wanted to emphasise those points. Okay, can I just um, can I just ask you? I mean, what what will be the majority of the nearly eleven thousand pound that you're after? Going to what is it spent on? Is it anything <coughs> specific? It's in the phone. Well, uh, some of I mean, it's sort of a mixture of things, isn't it? I broke it down. We broke it down in the budget into categories. Did, did workshops. Did yeah, I mean, this is the lantern and head desk and spectacle <laughs> sessions, materials, flyers, yeah. oh, okay. production fees, parade day staff costs, mm -hmm. the and clear. Food, drink and so on. I've, Gregory's Carnival has already got a lottery fund that's going into this project, right? And that will pay 
primarily for the drumming teacher setting up the drumming workshop and that bit of the project. They will also make a contribution to the materials. So the rest of it is really for the, the lessons, the space, the art materials, and to run to run an, that extensive workshop program. Mm. Thank you very much. Teresa, we've already. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yes, may, may, I ask, may I ask a question? Yeah. We've already um, put some money into drumming workshops, haven't we? How, no, how do those overlap? You haven't. You put the money into buying. Into drums. buying the kits, right? Yeah. Great. We've Thank got you. the drums. Okay. So, so we're saying the workshops. Set, exactly. Thank you, Councillor Green. Can I ask through you? Um, we have money set aside for Christmas, a Christmas event. Do you know how much that is? For our Christmas, our, yeah, we've set aside £10,000 and that's within the miscellaneous budget council agreed that it would come from there. Um, but due, due to the Jubilee, etc., the £60,000 has dis diminished within the events fund. That's part of the, the issue <coughs> with it this year. We spent a lot of money on... on money set aside for Christmas is still there. It's still safe. That is within the miscellaneous budget, so it's you council removed it from the events budget. Yeah. Members, any other comments, Councillor Wynn? I mean, this has got my full support, and I'd like to ensure that it gets the full amount of money because the Air Centre is a is a is a terrific base. It always has been, and now it's in a credible credible space. Uh, and. Uh, the Lantern Parade has always been something exceptionally magical that, that involves uh, involves families working together to create to create things which look stunningly beautiful on a winter's night. Do you wish to is, make a yeah, yeah. proposal? What I'm saying is, can we can we via some of the money from somewhere else where we've got maybe got pots? Maybe uh, Councillor Green has just mentioned the Christmas the Christmas budget. Or yeah, can we, we, um, we can do we have write, some. We do have something that we could take from elsewhere. Okay, the Ramsgate Farm. Yes, would you please? Okay, we. I'll make that proposal then. The, uh, my proposal is we, we give them the full amount. And right. We'll try and I'll take them from the uh, from the. That's right. Sorry, Steve. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Through you, Chair. Um, the money that is set aside for the two council events is to be used on those, uh, that's that within the yes. miscellaneous. Yes, exactly. What you have left in your events fund is just over 4,900. What you have left within your Ramsgate fund is just over 8,800. You could fire from the Ramsgate fund, however, you still have November through to March meetings where people could come through for Ramsgate fund funding applica uh, applications. Um, you could, in theory, use the Ramsgate Fund money combined with your events fund money tonight, and then if you do get further applications in, take it from there. You do you do now meet monthly, so you can look at applications monthly. So it's entirely up to council. Thank you. Members, any thoughts, Councillor? I think I'm concerned about. Uh, going over the budget, we know that we've got just shy of £5,000 and I'm happy to say that, that we say yes to that at that level, but I, all of the talk of moving money from here, there and everywhere, I think we actually need to perhaps come back next month with that um, to find out whether or not we can do that. I'm, I'm just a bit concerned about how we, how we achieve that. Okay, thank you. Anybody yes. else? Councillor Green? I, I have an alternative proposal if uh, Councillor Wings falls, and that is that we take £3,000 from our own Christmas budget, add it to the 4962 that we've got left in the mm. events fund, and make that our grant. Which would be what would be the total? The total would be 7962.94 if you use the full amount. Seems to make sense. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I just want to say, I, I, I'm, I'm of the view that we should be giving the full amount because this is an exceptional thing. What worries me, however, is that is the business of precedent. So I think we would have to be quite clear that this is because of exceptional reasons that we want to give such a large amount because we don't have this kind of amount to give to 
many other activities. So I, I think we would need to make it quite clear the got to basis be, on which we were making I've got to be prudent. Yeah. Mm. Councillor Nixie. I think um, if Councillor Ring was proposed first, as I said, and, and we then go with Councillor Greens, I, I, I fully support um, this idea especially in the sense that it is above and beyond just lantern parade workshops, it is a warm space. It's fantastic. I think that's something yeah. that we would be budgeting for in any way. So to be able to get some extra money to, to put towards it, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. Yeah. So ideally, I'd like to give them as much money as we are capable of giving them. But if that money is, I'll go with the, the, the majority. But I do support this and for that extra element of, of what we as a council would want the community to be doing as well. Um. From the chair, I, I would, um, my own personal view uh, would be to go with Councillor Green, I'm no, no disrespect, but to go with what Councillor Green was proposing and then to work with the town clerk to see if we could get money from elsewhere and, and with the, the chair of finance if we, could, if we could do that. But anyway, that's beside the point. Councillor Piper. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to... Quick question, really. Uh, it is obviously a lot of money, uh, and I guess we'll see how successful it is when it happens. Uh, is this likely to become an annual request for something in the region of ten grand to put this event on every year, uh, or is this this one to get all the stuff together for what they need, and it'll be much? Let's easier. ask. Let's ask. I Thank you. Ask her through Thank you. Yes. No, to be honest. We, we're aware we can't come back and ask for this again. We do want to make it into a spectacular event that the town can be proud of and work to the lines. But giving us a good start this year, increases our chances and getting Arts Council funding and lottery funding brokered into this event next year. So I do hope to use the photographic record, the evidence, scattered people's statements to broker in new funds for the event in the future. Thank you. Councillor Moore. Uh, could we know what production fees mean and what are they for and how much are they? Sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Production fees and how much are they? Oh, what am I sorry? Because I don't keep it in my head, I have to quickly look up what That's all right, yeah. Um, it's all different things, you know. Um, we do have uh, professional stewards seeing the parade across the road. We're not closing the road permanently, it's a rolling road closure, but we've got to employ stewards who are qualified to hold the traffic. So we, have, we don't know what the full costs are, we're still waiting for our costs back. We've asked for a few quotes. Um, just the technical things of helping people into, we're hoping to bring over uh, one of the Kent Giants, and it'll be like people stewarding that, putting its lights on, rigging pieces, putting big backpacks on. We'll have some big structures and costumes on the parade and things like that. So it's it's the production work of making sure you've got your batteries all work tested, fitted in properly, um, the health and safety aspects of it. Um, the job I do basically, I'm the producer, and believe you me, I work every single day on it. You know, so it's all those things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Huxley, you are Jane? No, it seems a lot of money to me. I don't, I don't really understand why it's so expensive. Um, I think we should just give them the £4,962.94 and, and that's the end of the fund. Thank you. Councillor Crittenden, and then... Um, I'm just picking up on the, the phrase, hoping to. Um, we've been caught out before under hoping to and it hasn't happened so um, if that element doesn't happen is there and, and there is a shortfall in the spend shall we say um, would we have that money back through the chair <laughs> because uh, I mean this has happened before where it was things were suggested would happen and then they didn't happen for, for reasons completely out of the organizers control maybe we can make we can make that a stipulation. Yeah, I'm just I just, just <coughs> I'm sorry. You get a hoping to. Um, we can make that a stipulation of um, of the of of the money given. We can do that. Yeah. And Councillor Wing. Yeah, as, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how many people around <coughs> this table have actually organised an event for the community, but I can tell you, as the chair of Addington Street, I had to cancel the event because of escalating costs. 
We did, and we did pay our two thousand back to Ramsgate Town Council. T uh, Terry in the corner isn't just somebody who's magically appeared within our community. Terry's been within this community for a significant number of years and has always delivered when she's promised she's going to do something. Uh, I can tell you road closure, the road closure for Addington Street alone went from £180 to well over £1,000. Uh, so I'm telling you that £10,000 for a, a, an, an event that is going to last for two months mm. Uh, it, it is not, they're not asking for an, for an awful lot actually, uh, and, okay. and there is significant costs that relate to first aid, road closures, so I think this is good value for money. It, okay. it also includes that, that uh, warm space that, that we were so concerned about as well. Thank you Councillor Wee. Uh, we have a proposal mm. which has been seconded, and that is for the full amount to be paid and is that to come from that comes from the events fund and what's left over from the Ramsgate fund which makes 10960 10, right. um, so you have enough money within those right. two funds so we have you. enough money well mm -hmm. sorry Just for clarification about what um, we actually had a second suggestion from council. Yeah, but you've got to deal with the first. Uh, no, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I finish my sentence, please? If we request for clarification, if we want to support Councillor Green's proposal, we have to vote against Councillor Wayne's yes, proposal. Yes. I just wanted to make sure that because we've had these, we've had, this we've had these problems. <laughs> we've had these problems before. Wow. Yeah. So I, I, I wanted to clarify it. Been around long enough to know that that is the case, anyway. Yeah. Anyway. No, actually, it's good clarification. So, you get it wrong. thank you. We have, Councillor Green, last one. Could I just caution Council that we have invited Salvation Army to make a Ramsgate fund and they haven't done so yet, but they still might. Okay. Right. We have a proposal, <clears throat> and this has been seconded uh, for the for, to pay the full the full amount on this item. Thank you. All those in favour, please. For those against, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that, that's obviously lost. <coughs> Second proposal. Is that we take the 4,962 pounds, 94 pence from the events fund, plus 3,000 pounds from our Christmas fund, as a, as a allocation to this event. Can I just say something? Bearing in mind that our Christmas fund was for events at Christmas, and this is an event at Christmas. Um, Councillor Green, our Christmas fund £10,000 is for the switch on um, Christmas lights and also for the firework display. Um, so you will be reducing that by £3,000, so it will go down to seven. Just, a, just as a caution, but then we can we can move on at the next council, um, maybe, and, and try and sort something out. Okay. Then a seconder. Anybody seconding, please? <coughs> Councillor Nix is seconding. Thank you. Okay, you're all aware of what you're now going to vote on, or not, as the case may be. <laughs> yes, please. The total will be seven thousand nine hundred sixty-two pounds and ninety-four pence. Thank you. Yeah, may I just ask? To Terry, if we don't give you the full amount, would you be able to do the event? Well, things will reduce, do you mean, in the proposal, and we'll go back and look. Obviously, <coughs> we still want to deliver uh, a, a great play, lifestyle memories, great workshops. So it will either be reducing the number of workshops or be cutting out the bonfire and the at the end, do you mean? Three thousand pounds. We'll review it. That's cool. Okay. Right, we have a proposal and a seconder. Um, all in favour, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those against? Two, three. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, still on item five. Uh, item five, uh, point three. You're welcome to say if you don't. Come back, Councillor Everington, all is forgiven. You're welcome. Thank you for your explanation. <laughs> no hiding in there, Councillor Everington. Come out.
<coughs> right, I'll pass over to the Deputy Town Clerk, please. Thank you, Chair. The Town Promotion Committee has asked that Council rise £12,000 from the miscellaneous budget to the Town Beautification Budget in order to progress with plans to install decorative lighting on the harbour arches in the, within the current financial year. There is now insufficient funds in the miscellaneous budget for this environment. Um, the Town Clerk has suggested the, the potential alternative budget could be used, and that is the capital projects and asset acquisitions, which currently has just over 1,100,000 in, within that budget, but it is, is intended for Ramsgate, uh, sorry, Radford House. Um, Council, to decide, please. Thank you. Members, any comments, please? I, I, I mean, from sorry, councillor. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm not sure that we should use money from the Bradford House. I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, the uh, money that was bequeathed to Ramsgate Town mm. Council was meant for that building or whatever we we chose to keep that building. Yes. To get it up and running. Right. Okay. And I don't think it's appropriate to take money from there for the lights. Thank you very much, okay. Councillor Green. Um, that budget for Radford House includes the request, but, it, but the request isn't, isn't the whole of that. Um, it is, at the moment, it is not planned to spend that amount of money on Radford House. What is planned is considerably less than that. That doesn't mean, though, that with the way costs of various things are rising at the moment, at least some of that money, a large portion of that money, will be required. So, and also, I don't think that, well certainly that amount of money won't be spent this financial year. So we could look at it again when we set our precepts yeah. next year. So, speaking as Chair of FNGP, I think we could do this without risking the Radford House project if, if Council feels we should. Okay, thank you. I, I just wondered how, making, how short we are. Unfortunately, we need to have a How much more money we need for, for this? Um, town beautification project. Um, Councillor, we actually need the 12,000. Oh, so we need all of it? We need 12,000. The miscellaneous budget can't can't deal with it. The town promotion committee budget, uh, or the miscellaneous budget can't cope with it. Um, so the 12,000 literally is vied from the capital projects and asset acquisitions balance. Oh, I see. As, as per the... Um, That's a lot. Is there nothing left in the miscellaneous budget? Unfortunately, I do not have those figures. Um, Cash Grinder? I was actually going to ask exactly the same question. How much is in the miscellaneous budget and what's the difference between that and 12,000? So that, that was exactly the same question as Councillor Makinson. Unfortunately, I can't answer that um, because I'm <coughs> literally covering this meeting. I haven't been. Because, mm. I, I mean, if, it would be helpful to know that. Um, I th um, sorry, if I could just come in here. I, I, I think uh, we would all like the lights yeah. 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 in the arches. We think yes. that that would be an ideal thing. Yes. Um, and my own view is I, I would uh, I would support what the town clerk has said, and and for us to give the twelve thousand in relation to this. Um, and as Councillor Green has said, you know that. The, the Radford House money is not going to be spent this year, so we will have next year's budget and we can look at that and then top that up. No. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm proposing that we accept it. And I'll second that. Councillor Wing seconded. it. Uh, all in favour, please show. Thank you. Those against? Two. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, what I can. Abstentions. Abstention, sorry, Councillor Ezekiel. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave. And I think Councillor Piper is abstained. 
Yeah, he'd abstain as well. You tell, you tell him he's abstained. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> Green, did you want to say something? Okay. He's abstaining. He's abstaining as well. Okay. Um, members did ask about the balance of the miscellaneous budget, which I will find out for you tomorrow and circulate it within an email. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Right, item, uh, item four of item five, um, to consider the quote from Guardian Security and Fire to install CCTV at the Chiltern Lane allotment site. This quote was previously uh, considered by the FNGP committee and it resolved that Councillor Green would find out more information which is now, which he has undertaken. Thank Can you. I just let, yeah. let um, me turn Members, uh, I cannot advise you detail of why we need CCTV at this um, allotment site, but I must advise you that it's quite urgent that we do get this fitted at some point soon. Thank you. Dr. Green. I have visited the site and I have spoken to the site rep and I am convinced <coughs> that the site does need CCTV because of some of the goings on that uh, um, take place on that site. Also, um, we have to allow access to the person that owns the piece of land adjacent to the, uh, to the site. And as he's now got it up for sale um, by auction, uh, he is allowing various people through our um, in order to view that, that piece of land. I understand it's been sold. So, just just you've taken um, the reason away, but it was another reason for, but just another reason. I, th I think as well. I, th I think my concerns are uh, concerns, but I think knowledge, need knowledge of who are, are this company that we're paying. Are they going to monitor the um, our CC TV? Yeah. So they will. Uh, the hard drive monitor. So they'll provide the recorder, the hard drive monitor, them, and the monitor. So that it appears that that monitor then may be coming here, but the, then mm -hmm. we would only look at that monitor. If there was an issue. Re look at it if there is an issue, wouldn't we? So Absolutely. that would be. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank members, you. the um, allotments budget can handle the payment mm -hmm. for this equipment. Thank you. Members? Yeah. In answer, I, mean, I don't think there's a problem. No, it won't. No, but we... It could have been recorded. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I meant by, but it would be on the monitor. It was a monitor I was referring to, not monitoring it. Can I screen that? What about the costs ongoing? Are they they're ongoing costs year on, or is... What's that situation? I think, sorry, Chair, I think yes. that, that would be a question if there's a breakdown or something like that, because it's not being monitored <coughs> by someone 24 hours or, no. or anything. So the ongoing cost would depend on whether it's been vandalised or um, there is a fault yeah. with it. So what, we wouldn't actually know what that would be. So there wouldn't be an annual contract or anything? No, 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 no. this is a one-off. <laughs> this is a one-off. It up and it, it sits and, and it records. Yeah. yeah. I say blindly, but if you know, uh, no. and if we so there is likely to be ongoing costs, but it it's, will come from vandalised, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. breakdowns or whatever, yeah. rather than anything. If it works perfectly. Okay, like, sorry, can we not sorry, talk sorry. here, please? Uh, <laughs> Councillor Green, want you to come back? Would be added to our insurance. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to propose this from from the chair. Second. Another seconder, Councillor Austin. Um, all those in favour, please show. Thank you. That's unanimous. Oh, did, uh, or, oh any, anybody against? Oh, thank you. Oh. Any abstentions? <laughs> thank you. That's carried. Okay. Right. Uh, item six is collections policy, and, and hopefully you've seen the report that Councillor Ravenden has uh, very kindly produced. Yep. In relation to collections of um, Ramsgate's heritage and civic items that were once the former property of the Ramsgate Chartered Trustees, um, 
the, uh, the, res the resolution of the report is that Councillor Avondu uh, proposes that Ramsgate Town Council adopt a collection management policy with the purpose of restoring a town archive for future generations and the day-to-day -day working of the council. Is there anything you'd like to say, Councillor? Uh, yeah, there's only one thing. Well, I've got loads of notes. I mean, I've really well researched this. One thing we've got to look into is the fact that we need a management policy cover for 200,000 items that have now been identified in the papers at Radford House. And these really need to, you know, a good management policy. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Pyfe. Thank you, Chair. Um, personally, I'd like to thank you for all the work you've done on this prior to joining this council. Indeed. Yes, it's, uh, it's known to many, but perhaps not the public who might be listening in this evening, that this has been an interest of yours for some time. And I think the town does a bit of gratitude for what you've done so far. Yeah. My question, Chair, please. Yes. Um, I mean, I thought support. we need a policy. Who's going to write it? Uh, well, I, I understand of having a quick chat with the town clerk. I think the town clerks uh, would kind of take that on. And to see from other councils, obviously, if she worked with Sandwich, they would have a, maybe a similar thing that, that, that she would be able to do. So, um, I'm fine, thank I, you, Chair. In which case, I'd like to. My only <laughs> concern is, is where will it all go? Yeah, where will we store it? Or will it have to be stored in a proper conditions and everything like that? But I think that's first of all we need to get the first step and let's get a and let's get a policy. Cardboard boxes at the top of Radford House. Cardboard boxes at the top of Radford House, yeah. Councillor Huxley. Long, long time ago when dinosaurs on Rem the Earth, I worked uh, in the British Library up in London. Oh how lovely. I had to catalogue everything. So I did cataloguing. So this is this is one of the steps. You have to catalogue all your items, otherwise nobody knows what's actually in it. Right. And things get lost. And over the years they have got lost, have they not, Councillor? Indeed. Indeed they have. Thanks. Councillor Crittenden, do you have your hand up? I was just going to second yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. 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 Yeah, just one point I want to make. I've now got an update of, so far, what they've done on the Rackford House papers. Mm. And there is so much information here that every single member here will find of interest. Uh, what I will do, I'll email it to every single member yeah. so you can go through it because it, it goes through everything. I mean, there's Newington, there's references to the Claps and Madeira Walk, there's a load of Royalist uh, proclamations in there, and it even lists the Will of St. Moses on the Fury. So obviously, I'm really sort of my balls and all that could be. Um, yes, well, can you wait and do that about Christmas so I've got the time to read it? That be, <laughs> you could do that, you could do that, Tony. Uh, that'd be fine. Sorry, who had down there? Councillor Green. <laughs> there, is some, there is some mention of Ramsgate. As, as I mentioned earlier, uh, number it. I have the box number because when that guy was speaking, I was actually going through it and there is details on it. But you'll be surprised the information that we are that we are sitting on will be benefit to the business of this council. You know. Okay. Uh, say something. Sorry, Councillor Hubrington. I'd like to thank you too, Tony, because you certainly have hit the ground running. I echo what um, Councillor Piper mm. said. I've been really impressed with not only everything that you've done here, but you've been posting up on you know the various web uh, various sites in on Facebook and various other things, which is getting people more and more interested in this. Indeed. It's really yes. helpful. I have to say, I've learned a lot looking at this Facebook. Yes, me too. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Councillor Green and Councillor Wing. What a tragedy it is that Broadstairs Council and TDC between them destroyed an equal amount of Ramsgate yeah. information. I mean, I hated history until I moved to Ramsgate, Ramsgate, and you walk around... The well, you're part of it now, so... You... <laughs> we just walk surrounded by history and our heritage, and it's important that, it's important that we've got a champion to help us save what we've got and save it for future generations. So thank you, Tony, for really support this. Uh, members, I propose um, that we note the report but also ask the town clerk 
to proceed to look at other places where they have sandwich. a similar policy, which which would be sandwich, and then to and then to work on that. I'll propose that. You've already got a second. Pro you've already got a proposal. Thank you. Have we? Yes, you will. Councillor oh. Piper proposed the resolution, and Councillor Crittenden second it. Oh, well, I'll take it all back then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, we've got to propose a second. All in favour? Thank you. Carried. That's brilliant. Well done. Um, right, item seven, climate change. Very important issue. Uh, item one of item seven is to consider if what response is required to Thanet District Council's net zero strategy, and hopefully... You've all maybe have all seen it or, or looked on the website or whatever. Um, and uh, the consultation ends on the 11th of November, um, and a further report from the Council's Climate Change Action Group uh, in response to this consultation is to follow. Um, Chair, I do not have that um, document. That hasn't come to me yet. So all we have at the moment is the net zero strategy from TDC. Okay. So um, I think in, in, in that case, I think it's just too much of an important item not to talk about. Um, but I think as a moving on from that, I think we need to make a proposal um, but we can't do that until we've seen what the response of our, our, of our climate... Um, although, hang on a minute. Although, 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 although. I am sure I've seen... Those are the next two, ne next two parts. Oh, OK, OK, sorry, I'm looking at... I know at the task force it was a really useful meeting in the letter yeah. of the, of the, of the, our response was to be positively encouraged by the next zero strategy that Dr Hannah Scott has produced. Uh, and I don't know where the letter is because Deb had the letter with her on that day, didn't she? Uh -huh. or, or she yeah, had, I don't. The other letter, it's letter is rebellion. We have, we yeah. have the, the yeah. other letter, yeah. which I mean, is I another part mm. to this item, mm. but the actual mm. report that I was due to receive um, I believe that the chair of the um, Climate Change Action Group was going to draft it and then, mm -hmm. then share it with the group to get their comments. However, they only met on Thursday, I believe, last yeah. week. Yeah, they did. So, yeah. they, yeah. Had, so, had, so, so they haven't had time to actually okay. produce their report, but we only have a couple of weeks to respond. Okay. Um, does anyone want to make a proposal, Councillor Austin? Can I propose that we... Uh, wait to get that document from the Climate Change Task Group, but in the meanwhile, perhaps the Deputy Town Clerk could write round to members and remind us that if we've got any ideas, any comments that we want to make individually that could go into our response, we could send them through by email. Would that be possible? Of course. It would be. And, um, yeah, because I think, as obviously, as a council, we need to respond to the next... I've received some comments from having, some residents, so I, I wanted to be able to feed those... In I mean, having, having read TDC's strategy itself, you know, I can't see anything wrong with it yeah, at all. Right. I think it's very positive. Um, I, you know, I think it's something that we should support, but if anyone's got any extra mm. items in, re in relation to the... Zero strategy, then, then they should put it in. That's that, so. I'm on that committee. It's called the Climate Change Cabinet Advisory Group. Right. CAG. It's yeah. not a. It's not an action group. No, that's our, the, group. our that's action group. group. Yeah. No, you're that. talking RTC's action group. Oh, sorry. RTC's action group, and yeah. you're yeah. on the. That's a bit confusing, then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, anyway, the next meeting of the TDC CAG is yeah. Monday. Okay. So presumably then. We've got until 22nd yeah. November to respond. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'll, to, yeah, I'll change that. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Obviously, in as, in as far as we can go with this, as a town council and as a district council, I'm supportive of lots of the measures that are being made, but we had a classic example the other night at TDC, um, which I, I think I would just urge us a bit of caution on. TDC, and indeed RTC, can declare a climate emergency and can set a strategy and a policy for their own sphere of influence. What's happened at TDC 
Um, and one example of it the other night was we were given the carbon footprint of each individual in Thanet, approximately. <coughs> but then that was compared to the world consumption of beef. We really are stepping outside. I believe that TDC and RTC can have a strategy, a zero strategy, can have a policy, can make it work. But in short, neither TDC nor RTC have the moral or legal authority to make Mr. Piper and Ron St. James Avenue do to his house what they would like him to do to his house. So my concern, and that's all it is, is that we don't make this thing bigger than the boundaries of responsibility that we actually have. TDC, I think, are doing that. They're making it too big. I wouldn't like RTC to go down the same road. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So the TDC net zero strategy is for many district councils, buildings, yes. cars, vehicles, um, staff, and in it, it does specifically say we can't do anything outside that. Well, but they, what they're trying to do is to show as a council okay, that they, they're as a, an example, they make as an example of what other people can follow. So it, you know, encouraging, for example, um, the tourist industry in Thanet, you know, say bed and breakfast, hotels, to follow a, a net zero strategy yeah. so, so that you reduce yeah. carbon emissions. So as a way of, as a lead organisation, so therefore parish councils or RTC, for example, could do the same. It's, it's an overall strategy. It's not. It's not. Let's change the world. It's not picking on. Not picking on the pipe. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford beef anyway. Well, that's, so that's, 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 that's where the meeting went the other night. Can't the meeting was been, not. We had a presentation of turning boilers down and things. I've been married forty-four years, and the boiler in my house has never been higher than sixty degrees. Oh. Ever. Oh. Ever. So I didn't really need a 10 minute video on turning the Have you got your vest on? Woolly. <laughs> <laughs> just to say, it's a very specific thing and we've worked very hard on this for, what, two years really? Three years. So right, I've got it's not you. trying to say to people, it's leading by example, it's not say, you know, can, Mr Piper, you've got to turn your boiler down, you know. So it's, it's an inspirational thing. Okay, I've got uh, Councillor Austin, yeah. Green, Oh, no, I was, I was after Tricia. Oh, oh yeah. all right. I'll do, you, I'll do it the other way around then. I like so, well, Councillor Austin, Councillor Wing, Councillor Green, Councillor Crindon. Okay, so, Councillor Austin. My understanding is that the standard way that a net zero strategy for an area is created is about different scopes of emissions. So, you talk about what you're responsible for yourself, as Councillor Crindon said, and then you look at what the other thing, other emissions are and the other issues in the area and and you can see in the strategy that there are pie charts showing yeah. which bit is Senate District Council, which bit is residents, which bit is industry etc. And as Councillor Huxley said, it's about helping and supporting and leading by example. It's not about telling people you've got to do this, that and the other, but it's about giving people ideas and strategies and information so they can, hopefully, uh, reduce their emissions, which will nearly always involve reducing their costs as well, which in the current climate is particularly valuable. So I would applaud that aspect of the strategy. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wing. I, I mean, I completely disagree with uh, Councillor Piper, actually, and, and Councillor Austin's right. There, there are three fears of spheres of influence. <laughs> there, there, are, there are those things, those things you can control, and you can, you can have them as an individual, or, or as a group, or as a local council, or a school. So they're the things you can control. There are also the other things you can influence, and that is about our sphere as influence, as uh, Councillor Hudson said. And then there are those things that you cannot control. And I think we have a duty not to tell people you should stop eating meat or you need to get on a bus rather than get in your car, but to demystify what what uh, demystify how each each one of us can look at look at our lifestyles and make some simple changes that that do help the planet. You know, it's not the same China needs to reduce its emissions when we buy most of our goods from China because we are actually feeding the feeding, feeding the lion. Uh, and I actually found that, uh, that, that the, the geeko eco thing 
in incredibly useful, and I'm now quite addicted to it. It's even down to making sure I don't spend five minutes in the shower. I've got it down to two minutes. I'm still clean mm -hmm. at the end. Well, I'm, and I'm reducing it. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the things yeah. that these are the, these are the simple the simple yeah. things that we can encourage people to do, not tell them. To and do. the last thing I want is yes, to be That's the uh, word encouragement. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Wing. Councillor Green. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a good policy, but like so many TVC policies, I mean, very often they're very good, but then they don't find their way into TVC. And this, we, well, TVC councillors here, make to make sure that this does find its way into TVC's yep. decision making, particularly their purchasing problem. Policies, yep. but also in the local planning review, yep. which is their best uh, opportunity to influence the area. I mean, I've been banging on since since we got elected uh, with the local plan team to ensure that we have uh, solar panels on every new. Yeah. Development yeah. and it's never been adopted, and it's only we're doing it with da 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 da. Something so simple as water conservation. <coughs> exactly. Okay, uh, that's enough yeah. for me. Uh, I've got Councillor Crittenden. Yeah, two things. Picking up, um, Councillor Piper raised it um, about the meeting the other night, and um, Councillor Wing has, has touched on the elements of it, but. Over 50% of the um, achievement of reaching net zero is actually reducing consumption um, from you and I, anyone sort of in this room. But that is really completely against, and this is the question that I raised in that, that briefing, um, against the other messaging is that you have to spend and consume in yeah. order to maintain the economy. So we're only a little voice saying reduce consumption. There are much, much bigger pots of money behind advertising of big business that says spend, spend, spend. And I remember a uh, few years ago when we were coming out of a recession, I remember reading somewhere we need to get the Chinese to buy more of their own goods they produce because they're not consuming enough. So we actually have a real dynamic in, in achieving this. Um, and the other thing, I, so that's just a comment on it, um, and it, it does make zero nigh on impossible because we haven't got the budgets that the, the big businesses have. But also at the end of that presentation was the, there's um, an online uh, survey for residents, including ourselves, to sign up to where you can actually comment on that. Um, so perhaps we need to promote that as well because there is a chance um, for everyone in the community to uh, make their, those kinds of comments. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the new prime minister's got it all covered. <laughs> um, <coughs> Councillor Hartley. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the problem, as Councillor Green said, was um, money from central government is a problem yeah. to finance all these things. Um, the bit I know the most about is about TDC housing. They are going to put in retrofitting, insulation is the main thing. So they've got a £40 million pound budget from the government and they're going to do that in the next two years. Brilliant. So that's for some of their housing stock, but not for all of it. But that is going to, as Councillor Green was saying, this policy is going to go through everything at TDC, procurement, management, senior management scheme, how they, how they interact. We got? You know, within the council. This is the RTC table as well. We can we can use this strategy at RTC as well. Okay, thank you. Um, members, I want to... We've got a proposal which Councillor is... Councillor Austin proposed that we wait for the uh, CCTG report, which is our the action group report, and mm. for myself to email councillors for comments. Mm, you need a seconder. Seconder. Yes. Councillor Ara, all in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Are there any against? Any abstention? Okay. Lovely, thank you. Um, okay, uh, 
Item uh, two of seven is to consider and approve a letter that's been drafted by the Climate Change Action Group. Thank you, uh, Chair. This uh, letter, which I presume you've all seen, is with regard to the grant of a DCO for the development of a new cargo hub <coughs> airport at Manskent. Uh, Chair of the Ramsgate Town Climate Ch Change Action Group, so she's called it, Task Group, is a member of the public, and therefore <coughs> this letter needs to go out under the uh, remit of RTC from our Chair. Um, and council is asked to approve that or not. Not. Thank you. It's the case, mate. Councillor Green. I advised the action group that they couldn't send this to the town council, on behalf of the town council, that it had to come through either FNGP or, or council for approval. Um, I'd have to propose that we change the intended recipient. This week's minister. Can I, um, I, I just want to make a comment on this, and, and that is that um, <coughs> the letter is asking for the Secretary of State, effectively, to change their mind. Um, and to be quite honest, personal view, to be quite frank, it doesn't carry any weight at all. Um, and McKinley's petition. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And and my own view on that, my, my my view on that is that I would prefer, I would prefer, and I would prefer the council to wait until such time as the, um, whether we know another judicial review is to take place. And if that is the case, then we can write that in support of the, of the judicial review if that is what the council wants. But I see no point in sending that now. That's just my personal view. Okay, okay thank you. Councillor Piper. Uh, thank you, Chair, I, I agree. Um, <coughs> And I think this has its value as a letter from an individual, but not uh, either from this council. I agree with Councillor uh, Green, what he said just a moment ago, but I don't think the council can support this. Uh, I don't want to open a massive can, can of worms, but there's an awful lot of stuff in here which doesn't pass scrutiny test. But it does give us a classic example of my previous point on the previous matter. The writer says, Ramsgate Town Council <coughs> declared a climate emergency and the council has committed to net zero by 2050. The redevelopment of polluting cargo hub less than four kilometres from our offices and less than one and a half kilometres from some of our residents make this commitment impossible. That demonstrates to me they don't understand that Ramsgate Town Council <coughs> has the authority to deal with its own carbon footprint it can advise and encourage others, but to say it makes Ramsgate Town Council's commitment to net zero impossible is simply not true. It doesn't affect the council offices and us as an institution in the way this writer is saying. So that's just an example of the point I was making earlier. I, I do, I take, you, I I, I do take what you're saying on that. That's Councillor Rizeki. Yeah, obviously, uh, Chair, as you can imagine, I'm totally against the letter. Um, one reason is that is that this has been hooked into climate change and everything. And for every aircraft that you divert into Manston that's not going to Heathrow or Gatwick, you're saving over an hour's flying time. So surely it's better for the, for the world's uh, benefit to have Manston open and get more aircraft to go in there rather than to go as far away as Heathrow and Gatwick, where you're looking at between an hour and an hour and a half extra flying and taxiing time. That's where it's coming from, I guess. Yes, thank you. Direction it's coming from. Uh, Councillor Green, then Councillor Mathis. Half an hour that. Councillor Green. Should I go first? Yes. Councillor Mathis. immediately respond because you said that before, Councillor Rizeki. Now, how, when they unload the cargo planes into lorries, 
how do the how do the goods get to Poundland in um, High Street? How do they get to wherever they're supposed to be going? Surely a million lorries, not a million, a load of lorries are going to be much more polluting and much uh, more damaging to our roads. Sorry, members, I don't want to get, I don't want to get involved. I don't want us to get involved in an argument about whether there should be one an airport or there shouldn't be an airport. We just want to deal with this letter, please, yeah. Councillor Green. To be fair to the to the working group. The thinking was that Amory Trevelyan has nothing invested in this decision to approve a DCO. She didn't make it, her predecessor did. Um, and so there was just a chance that rather than risk losing a DCO again, she might just be persuaded that it's not a good idea. That was the point of the letter. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Huxley, then Councillor Gritton. I agree with you, Chair. I think this letter shouldn't be sent at the present time. I think we should wait for what happens, whether there's going to be a second JR judicial review. In my opinion, I would imagine that would be the case because nothing has changed from the first one. Um, and this is probably a bit controversial, but um, in my opinion, the chair of any committee at RTC shouldn't be a resident. I think it should be a councillor. In this case, I don't think it's appropriate that it's someone who's a resident. I, I quite agree with you on that. But anyway, <laughs> Councillor Crittenden. Uh, I think I'm going to say similar to what various other people have already said, and that is that I think, yes, it, it shouldn't be coming from us at this time. Um, I think it, it certainly has value as residents writing it, um, and it, it might be that uh, there may be more than one that needs to write it, but this is just the wrong time. I'm proposing that then, that at this, that this time we do not send this letter on behalf of Ramsgate Town Council, but we await to see whether the judicial review is accepted. And, and in that case, then I think we can work with the club and then we can revisit it. A seconder, please. Yes, Councillor Piper. Councillor Piper. Right, all those in favour, please show. Those against? Two. That's, uh, Sorry. Abstain. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you. <coughs> right. Um, do, 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 do. Item three uh, to consider the carpet. Carpet? <laughs> oh, it's been a long day, hasn't it? The carpet. The, the carpet are. <laughs> carbon <laughs> audit report <laughs> from the climate change. Action Group. Thank you, Chair. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't present at this meeting, um, but Ilana Adamson, who is a sustainability consultant, has looked at the uh, carbon orbit audit and come up with um, various comments. Um, <coughs> that's all I can tell you, really. Um, Have members read this? Councillor Green. I've read it. <laughs> didn't understand it. Uh, Just on it. Didn't uh, wrote our original Calvin Lord. I personally would like to see a report from him. I, I absolutely agree with you. I think you know Dean's done a hell of a lot of work for this council in relation to it, and I would like him to look at it. Mm -hmm and to get comments from him and then he can come back to council. I'll propose that second. Can I just say something, Chair? Um, I think originally the town clerk who did the same thing at Sandwich Town Council uh, has created, said we should create a parish emergency plan right. that would incorporate this. Yeah. So physic talks about things like flooding. Okay. So that's something I think Laura doesn't know about, that she's thinking about. Yeah. I don't know if that's a combination of what we could do. The, the town clerk has also um, said that rather than this move to officers, that the Climate Change Action Group to consider how to implement the content of the reports as as a working group. We need Dean's advice. But we need Dean's but advice need. on that, and yeah, I want him so to. I definitely want him involved in this, and I want him to come back to us, or he or he comes back to me. 
uh, and with the town clerk so we can get that sorted. Councillor Wynn. I'd just like to say about this, the climate group, is that I disagree. I, I think it's a very positive step and a bold step we've taken to have the chair as a, as a citizen. And exactly the same as Councillor Green has said, some of this is way beyond me and I don't quite understand it, but because I'm in a committee where there are experts, yes. I am rapidly learning about things. And I also think Dean's done a fabulous job. From, 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 from a zero start, he's created something which has been able to start mapping what we're doing as a council, so what we have direct effects on. And I think having these experts in the room uh, for Dean also offers him a chance to grow in terms of his, his uh, knowledge of, of uh, environment, you know, climate change issues. So I, I welcome the fact that we've taken a brave step to have to make a, a, a citizen a chair. I think yeah, it's yeah. very empowering for us and for them. And I welcome the fact that no. I'm sat in a, on a committee learning stuff from experts uh, from areas that I know very little about. I don't agree. Um, we're a council. Council should chair all of its meetings. The council should chair all of its meetings. Experts, as you say, which you're learning from, give us the input of that, and then you still learn from that. Having the, the chair doing it doesn't make a blind bit of difference, uh, except it's a council. It's a council uh, committee, and it should be chaired by a councillor. End of. Chair at TDC at the climate action, sorry, climate uh, CAG, um, it's led by Hannah Scott, who's the officer. She has other officers that input into the meetings and write reports. The councillors on the committee are councillors, so we take the final decision. So we take all the information that they give us as the officers. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a resident who is leading it. We are the council, we are, you know, it is funded by the residents, you know, we are in control of the, what's kind of come out of this. Can I I'm just say, so say council wing. But I certainly don't intend anything to take her off of it, but I'm just saying, I think in future we need to be careful about that, Councillor Green. In future, fine, but I was just going to remind council but it was a council decision to allow this committee. Absolutely. Yes, I do, but I think it was a wrong decision. Uh, and that's just my, that's my view. But anyway, let's um, go forward. Council Piper seconded your proposal. Right. Which ones? I forgot what I said now. Um, to, <laughs> to pass this report to Dean yep. um, and ask yep. him to come up with a report in combination with um, in conjunction with, with this, the, report, with this and, report and then it needs to town talk clerk, to me. Yeah. with the town yeah. clerk with the town clerk and then we okay. can come back with it thank yeah in favor of that please show thank you anyone against no abstain no thank you <coughs> chair yes sorry uh, i've got to go and pick my daughter up from the station so thank you thank you for attending thank you thank you all thank you all thank you all uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, got, he's got to go and clean Rishi's car. <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> item eight, co community assets. Um, item one of that is to receive a written report from the town clerk regarding Albion Gardens and consider the recommendations contained therein. Um, from hopefully you've read it but if not if effectively uh, as, as, as you know we even before we were elected in 2019 this council had asked to take over Albion Gardens um, and, and for it to be a community asset transfer um, that was um, never processed uh, we've been back to the council on several occasions. I've certainly spent a lot of time trying to re resolve this. Um, effectively, what's now happened is uh, that when we were getting somewhere, the council did decided to go for a grant on the Pulamite, and that now restricts us. Uh, that restricts us six years uh, for it to be transferred. That is what the officers told us. We've subsequently been told by the Director of Regeneration uh, at TDC that it does not 
within that uh, mean that, uh, that another council cannot take it over. However, I think what we need to be clear of is that the the whole the council want us if should we take it over for it to be not only the gardens but the waterfall and the pullamite. Um, so really, this is just a it's really just an update for for you. Um, and uh, the, resolution. the resolution is that members are asked to consider if an asset transfer of the garden and war memorial, because that's the important part of it as well, should still progress and to challenge the estates team on their interpretation of Historic England's grant rules or conclude the inquiry for now to be picked up in the future council if they so Wish that's the that's uh, the recommendation. I don't know who was first, Councillor Crittenden. That was a fraction of a second ahead, but that was kind of, um, two things. Uh, the first one is we actually were leaning towards stroke the way that we didn't want the pullamite. Yes. And they are will only transfer the Albion Gardens with the pullamite waterfall. Yep. Um, we don't have the technical skills to do the um, uh, pump maintenance within our own staff, so we would need to be looking at external um, contractors to do that. Um, it is a massively major piece of work to, just to correct the overgrowth that is actually already in that waterfall area. It's in a, a huge state. Um, but the other thing is that's not in here, and um, uh, the town clerk is aware, um, as, as is uh, the town promoter, that actually there is also a query over the land registration of the, um, of the uh, Albion Gardens. Because when you look at the map and you look at where the land register is, it actually comes down the road and then it just cuts a straight line across. And there's lovely two chunks of pullamite that is actually not registered to anybody. Now, when that land was originally transferred from Ramsgate Borough Council in 1974, that land, that, that, those two chunks of pullamite, either side of the steps that approach Destiny, um, should have been registered as um, part of the land that is now owned by TDC. 1974, there was no need for the land to be registered under the legislation. It was actually not registered until 2007, and I have absolutely no idea why they drew a straight line across it. Um, and when I met with the director of property, he couldn't explain why there was a, he thought it was odd that there was a straight line across it. Um, so I would actually want to see that resolved first, because at the moment, um, we could actually have a video. We, we could walk in and own that bit of land if we wanted to, um, but it's, it's not registered to anybody, although, it actually belongs to TDC because it originally belonged to RBC. So I, I think there is an issue there as well um, okay. that would, that's not really part of this report, but it, 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 we are aware of Thank it. Thank you. Councillor Piper? No. Oh, Councillor Green, sorry. Yes, you were, you were a fraction of a second late, wasn't you? Sorry, Councillor Green. From, from a staffing point of view, Councillor Critican, Critican is <laughs> it's, a long day. it's been a long day, David. <laughs> it's quite correct. Um, we do not have the capability to look after, to look after the poor night and the waterfall. Um, I see that we're going to consider uh, destiny in a minute. Uh, that's a separate question. But what we do have the capability to do is to offer, along with other um, pocket part, parts, as they're called, um, TTC that, that will cut the grass in Albion Gardens, but I don't. I personally don't think we should. We should um, pursue it an asset transfer. Thank you, Jeff. Um, you've probably already been there, Councillor Crittenden. I'm sorry, Councillor Crittenden. Um, TDC have a, a, a map on their computer system, and you click on it, and it comes up pink. If it's pink, it belongs to TDC. If it's not, it doesn't. Um, however, the land registry, and I only know this because I've just done it regarding my own home and property boundaries, um, if, there, if you come across a mistake or a, um, an inconsistency on the land registry, for the princely sum of £48, you can have that corrected, so long as 
the relevant people have signed the paperwork. I've just done that to my house because they had a boundary uh -huh. going straight through the middle of ne one of next door's buildings. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to say to them, look, I don't own that building. It goes alongside it. Well, that'd be if I could sell it. Oh, that's <laughs> so I've just done that. It cost £48. I have to say the bad news was it took almost a year. And I'm simply talking about <coughs> purchasing a three foot stretch of land and a garage, you know, three foot wide, 20 yards long with a garage at the end of it. It, it took a year, but it, it costs 48 quid and it can be done. Um, they rectify mistakes on the land registry. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a pr proposal um, that we advise Thanet District Council that we do not take on Albion Gardens or the Pulamite or the Waterfall we did because they've made it clear that they will not let us just take the gardens on um, but to add in as well for the town clerk to advise that we could come to an agreement where we would maintain the grass cut the grass or whatever I was quite happy with that um, but I, I, I think we just have to take it that it's been going on for years and we ain't going to get anywhere with it. So I think we should tell them to stick it myself. Councillor Crittenden. Can I just very quickly um, add, comment on Councillor Green's point about the um, care of the gardens because under the new uh, strategy group that is due to meet um, fairly soon, that is uh, certainly an area that I would want to include for consideration. So that is in hand, um, I, I would suggest, and, and uh, also reviving the... Um, volunteer group that actually do a lot of the work in the gardens Indeed. has uh, kind of disintegrated a bit but but yeah. those two areas are actually going to be in hand so hopefully that will will be happening. Thank you. Councillor Piper. Uh, thank you Chair. At, at the bottom of uh, where it's item 8.1 um, there's the a note. Uh, there is another project underway looking at the green spaces and RTC yeah. who still have an involvement in the site. So we take consolation that's, in that. Yes. That's, that's the one I'm talking that's, about. That's, yeah. that's oh, right. Yeah. That's a yeah. that's that's strategy group. Sorry. Thank you. Councillor Nixie. I, I, it might be advisable for the town clerk who have the rights to TDC to explain that we are not interested. Yeah. To point out that the volunteers who've been outstanding up to this point are. I have, yeah. Outside. And not only are we not interested in it, but the volunteers are not be either, and therefore we're handing it back yeah. as, as a. So yeah. you deal with it type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, going. yeah. Let's see what they come back with anyway. Exactly. No. So, proposal seconder? Yeah. Yeah, anybody would do. Um, all in favour, please show. Thank you. Any objections? Abstentions? Oh, that's carried. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wings abstain. Um, so, that's that one. Right, uh, item two is to receive a written report from Councillor Crittenden regarding a war memorial at Albion Gardeners and the East Cliff Lions and consider the motions contained therein and sorry I've, I've, I've lost me a bit of paper which has got um, the resolution is to request for consideration and approval Ramsgate Town Council to approach TDC for a transfer of the monument known as Destiny into RTC ownership and request for consideration and approval that the Town Council to approach TDC for confirmation of ownership or otherwise the two Grade 2 listed structures known as the two lions on Ramsgate East Cliff with a view to a transfer of ownership uh, should that be possible if not the further investigation of ownership with a view of possession of these two. Um, I think I did have a chat with the town clerk uh, yesterday and what we both thought was a way forward. Sorry, Councillor Crittenden, to not let you, I'll let you come in a second. This is interesting, thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, for officers to seek quotations for any of the work for refurbishment of Destiny and the two lions before proceeding with any approach to TDC um, as detailed in the resolution. Uh, because I think what we, what we sat and discussed was 
Uh, one, I don't know what the actual uh, structure of destiny is, what material it is, and whether, oh, if you do, you can advise us in a second, but obviously, what material was used when it was a preview, when it was first done, and then uh, to see whether we get that. But uh, I, I certainly think that that's a good idea that we get we get quotes for it first before we go any further. Councillor Crittenden. Yeah, uh, we actually know that Destiny is carved from something called Portland stone. Oh. Um, Portland stone is an extremely soft stone, vulnerable to the elements. Um, I actually went to full council at RTC with a question at the last meeting um, regarding the monuments and memorials throughout the whole of Thanet District Council's area. Um, because in contravention of the uh, Cabinet Agreement in 2005, no work in um, prevention of uh, deterioration to any of the memorials and monuments in TDC ownership has been carried out since 2015. Um, what that has meant for the uh, Destiny Monument in particular is that she has uh, continued to deteriorate and is in, in a, now in a very poor condition um, as a result of neglect. But also a part of the answer that I got at Cabinet, uh, not at Cabinet, at Full Council was that the reason for that is there are no resources and not, the only action that they are going to take with regard to monuments and memorials is not to do any restoration, not to do any repair, not to do any preventative work, but to basically get rid of them. Okay. Um, so that was the answer I got in full council. That's what I took the question for, so I got that answer publicly, and I think I might even have quoted it in there. Um, yeah. there. Um, so it's right for us to take over, because they actually uh, want to get rid of it as much as they can anyway, because TDC haven't got the money to do it. Um, we know that it cost £6,000 for a full restoration in 2004, um, and that was grant funded partly by um, various local groups as well as um, uh, what was then Historic England. Um, as a statutory authority, we are not able to get grant funding from another statutory body. Um, so um, in, in Heritage England or whatever it's called now, would not be able to um, offer any grant funding towards the cost of any restoration. Um, and obviously that restoration is going to cost that much more than it did in two It would have to be done in Portland Stone. Yeah, I, I mean, actually, what I'm going to do at this moment is I'm actually going to ask you if um, Councillor Ovenden could comment, because he actually knows a bit more about Portland Stone than I do. No, he's looking at me a bit panicky. Um, so, but, but we've, we've been and we've had a look at it, and, um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, there is, there is work there. Um, my concern is that... This is a monument where our mayor goes every year um, and conducts one of the, the mayoral services, as well as various other things that, that happen every year around there, at, at, a, at a monument that is being completely neglected and deteriorating year on year. Um, do you wish to make a proposal? Yeah, that we actually do what I've, what, what's written at the end of the month. And would you, would you accept uh, a third Part of that is that we is that uh, officers seek quotations because obviously before we take it, or if the council decides that it will take it on, we need to know how much it costs, whether it can be repaired. Uh, there are, I mean, we we would if we had ownership of it, we would have to look at the the various options, and that may be um, repair, it may be replica, it could be anything. I, I, we would have to look at, at what all the options are to prevent further deterioration or restoration. Um, but un until or unless we actually have it in our I, I certainly think we should get a quotation first. Fair enough. It just makes common uh, sense. Okay. And, um, it makes common sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Okay. So we know what we're looking at money well, for. We have looked at trying to get quotations already, yeah, but that didn't come to anything. No, but hopefully so we'll go through. Here, then, yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, we're not exactly. Also, we've got to remember it's not just about statue, there's also a surround. A surround. Yeah. The tablets, yeah. Stone, which is for the uh, lower sedimentary bed. 
and it's actually fossil bearing. If you actually look at it, it's actually mm. fossils coming through. Mm. Interesting thing about it, it's like every war memorial with roundscapes in the First World War, there's no names on them. It's just in memory of the dead. And that's all they are. There are so many of them. That's it's a peace funny. memorial. Yeah. Councillor Makin, sir. Oh, I've had my hand. Oh, sorry, Beck. <laughs> 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 uh, I was before Tony, but never mind. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> Just learn to look left. Uh, well, I, 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 do rely, I do rely on a deputy clerk. <laughs> And it's late, so you get to the yeah. uh, I, I totally agree with taking control of that bit. It's interesting to note that as a statutory body, we can't apply for grants. So maybe there's a that maybe there's no, a way we of can, but not to other statutory bodies. I, make, I mean, what I'm saying is maybe there's maybe there's a, an option if we take control of it to actually involve the Ramsgate Society and yeah. in, in, in looking for so, so creating a, a destiny action group, if you like. But, that becomes a sort of a committee of its own that, that can that can look for, for money, pots of money that that are outside us. That, that That's any, what any, any money we could uh, apply for, but I yeah. totally support Good taking idea. control of it. Yeah. And Portland Stone, a lot of the Jacob Ladder is made in Portland Stone, it comes from Portland Bill. So it's a very important building material. Yeah. Does he know? <laughs> I did end the job. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Councilor Mike. <laughs> I mean, we have not very far away a very mon monumental building with lots of stone masons, I imagine, working on Canterbury Cathedral all the time. Perhaps we could even get someone to come from there. I'll ask the Archbishop. <laughs> Next time he drinks a bit. No, but they have all the expertise. That's yep. true. That's true. Yeah. That's a great thing. Chicken and egg. Last time I was there, there was seven from over there. Ask TDC in principle first. Or well, yeah, we could do we could do both, can't we? Yeah. I just wanted to include that that customs, we could do it. Customs will cost money, so I'll yeah. favour asking TDC in principle first. We can do that. Second. I can't remember the name of the chair of the people who are doing Radford House. Who's the person who's doing Radford? So who are you talking The consultant, about? Michael Foley. And Correct. His company, he, I did um, contact him quite a long time ago about the lands. Yeah. Not the three lands, but yeah. the two lands. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Very sure. <laughs> and um, <laughs> for, for applause. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Boom, boom. Um, and um, he said he was quite interested. He wanted to sort of okay. know who... Because it's TDC and I couldn't get any further through the maze of TDC bureaucracy. So he might be interested in giving a quote. Yeah. Because he got, he's got two people who, as you probably yeah. know, against... Sorry, can I just say? He's yes. got two he, he. people who he knows who are working on candidates. <laughs> and they came oh, to look okay. at the, the yeah. stonemasons. We can ask the town clerk to contact Michael. Yes. That, that's a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. I think that's a good, good idea. Councillor Nixie. Quote or no quote, we need to speak to TDC because so they could just turn around and say no. So if there's a proposal on the table, can I just second it, please? <laughs> can we vote? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Okay. All right, so we've got the pr proposals, the three. You happy with the three? Uh, yeah, the. Can we just check the. the um... The first, both of the two on here. Yes. And that we get the quotes is the third. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Those in five. Seconder. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. Yes. Yeah. So we'll add that in. Yeah. yeah. Seconder for that. Yeah. We have a seconder, Councillor Lara. All in favour? Thank you. That's fine. Against? Abstentions? Thank you. That's carried. Okay. Um, right. Um, Item three of this, to receive and note the notes of the meeting about the East Cliff Lift. The quotes, actions and information requested from TDC listed in, in the report. I don't know what I've done with my stuff, I think now. Yeah. East Cliff Lift. Yeah. Members, as you know, I mean, this matter has been going on for, for some time. Um, I was approached by the leader of the council telling, her, telling me that she's got 50 grand mate and holding her pocket in her trousers 
form that uh, money she's got from Southern Water and would be delighted to give it to Ramsgate Town Council towards the lift should the council decide to, to take it on. Back to her and said as, as uh, taking on board what Councillor Green proposed that we take on the, uh, we, we're given a concession as well. Uh, she advised me that she would um, give the lift and the concession um, but we've had nothing in writing, we've had no con no confirmation. Both uh, the town clerk and myself have written separately to the chief executive, De uh, interim chief executive and the leader and the deputy leader of the council requesting meetings with them so that we can discuss various issues which includes the lift, the bandstand, and other issues, the market, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, I've had no response to my emails. The chief executive did respond to the town clerks, saying that she would get he would get officers to look at it. That was about three or four weeks ago. We've had nothing since. Um, so effectively, um, what we what we was. The town clerk and I are suggesting to you is that um, the suggested actions on on the back there, if you've seen those, and whether you would be in favour uh, in, in favour of those actions, and which is to enable us to get proper, up to date quotes of both the engineer and uh, and the uh, uh, not the architect the. Um, Jeff, Jeff Oliver no. to, to see this, the actual state of the building and for the TDC to confirm exactly what part, how far that lift goes into the cliff because that is something that we need to know as well. So if if members are in favour of that, uh, we will proceed. Could I just do a straw poll? Nothing formal, just a straw poll to see if members would prefer Ramsgate Town Council to actually take that lift and concession on. Yes. yes. Who would be in I know we've got other things to, yeah. to do. Yes. Definitely. So on the whole, we would be in favour of doing that, depending on the money that we get. Yes. 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 If it came with the money and the concession. The concession. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we, we will forward that on as if all members are in favour of that. Yep. We will continue. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll propose yes. Councillor Nixie second. And that is all of this. That's all of that, yeah. And plus the Yeah, plus the other bits, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, hang on, that's no there it is. Move bit. Thank you. No, I don't want that. Move the other bit. Um, oh yes, yes, yes. Item nine is uh, tree planting Jubilee Forest. Um, the report is Pretty much, yeah, if you want to go to it. Okay. Um, previously discussed the possibility of increasing tree coverage and for us to plant trees. Um, we can plant trees on TDC owned land uh, at Jackie Baker's, however, we would be fully uh, responsible for maintenance. TDC will not water or care for those those trees Pathetic, at all. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> It's absolutely no. So the town clerk is asking to consider if, if you'd like to pro progress the, the proposal. If, ne if the necessary planting and aftercare can be taken in-house. In At the moment, we do have technicians who are doing a lot of outside work. Um, supervised technician has been asked to consider whether the technicians could manage the watering of new trees as required. And town clerk's waiting for his response on that. We're right. not so sure that they do have the capacity to make to look after a good number of trees. Um, there is oh. currently no budget for this project, and miscellaneous budget is now exhausted. Funds could be vied from the previous, as previously suggested, from capital projects and asset acquisitions, or the operating funds to be kept in reserve, which are to two hundred fifty thousand um, council to decide whether you want to. Carry on with this idea, or That's put it up. Thank you, Jeff. I could just flesh this out a little bit. This began when we were looking at the possibility of buying a piece of land. And my understanding was that there was 
certainly for one piece of land, there was a budget of up to 50,000 quid available. Um, I'm surprised that the figures weren't on, on this report. I did send the town clerk the full prepared stream for this because simultaneously to looking at the purchase of that piece of land, I was in talks with TDC about this. The original quote they gave me was for £30,000 for a mixture of oak and non-oak, for the stakes, the post hammers and everything, and the maintenance of those trees. Okay. And the quote they gave, and the email, I have sent the email to the town clerk, the quote they gave was £30,000 and that included maintaining the trees. Ah. Okay. But with regard to there being no budget, that's where it started, yeah. coming from the idea of purchasing land to plant some okay. trees. There is a canopy of trees that goes part of the way around. The idea was to continue it and call it the Jubilee Wall or something like yeah. that. Um, I, I suspect what will happen is that people might then want to put memorial benches in the walk and you know, people could walk and sit and so on. But that's just to flesh that out a little bit. Okay, thank um, you. I can certainly chase up why the £30,000 figure isn't there. Um, yeah, anyway, do, that's what that do you know the company? Do you know the company? TDC provided the estimate. Oh, TDC provided the They said provided, they would yeah. charge us 30000 quid to do the trees, and that would include maintaining the trees. I'll, I'll re-forward the email to the town clerk. Okay, thank you. Now, shall we? Can I just ask, I think the best tree planting that's happened in Fanny is what's happened up on the East Cliff. George Six Park. The George Six Park. It's I mean, it's absolutely superb because there's a mixture of yeah. trees that have been, the stakes are substantial, so I don't think they've lost a tree. And I, I think the aftercare has been superb. Uh, is it, Councillor Piper, do you know? <laughs> Councillor Piper, do you know if the quote from TDC involves the sort of planting that went up there, which I think is exceptionally good because it, it's, it sort of enhances the woodland that's already there, it's going to add to it rather than stick out. I think what's happened on, on my cliff is uh, strange. Chair, I think there was a general acceptance that some of the whips that had been put in Jackie Baker's weren't substantial yeah. enough. Yeah. The, the quote, as Councillor Green just worked out, those figures thus far come to about £7,000. That was for uh, an initial tranche of trees. The second email talked about making the trees more substantial rather than whips and to include maintenance. And as I say, the quote was £30,000. I thought I would be safe talking to them in those kinds of figures because we were considering spending 50000 buying a piece of land and then we would have to spend the money to change it. So I, I think when I saw this I thought I need to chase up the rest of that is. Thank you. I, I, I think we need to get some further information, some information on this. Before we can just and, and then so I, I'm going to propose that we uh, put this on the back burner for a bit and work with the town clerk to get some, get some, information. Get some information. If information. If you'd be kind yes. enough to resend that to the town clerk and to myself, Councillor Piper, yes. I would be be grateful. Yes. Okay. Seconder for that. Seconder for that. <laughs> All in favour of that? <laughs> Thank you, members. Uh, next meeting. Next meeting is on the thirtieth uh, November. Thirtieth of November. Thank you, members. That's the end. End of the meeting. Um, Thank you, Chair. Well